Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Sam, my song of the year for 2023, mostly due to its emotional scope, atmospheric black metal, but hopefully with enough unusual elements to keep you interested. So we're going to be looking at the band Panopticon, which we've actually checked out recently-ish, sometime this year. I remember having a discussion about what a panopticon was although i guess there's a chance that might have been for a song named panopticon instead of a band now that i think about it regardless let's dive into this we're looking at the blue against the white from the rhyme of memory album I'm kind of sold right off this intro. I hope they stick with something like this, expand upon it. You can already hear the tremolo picking coming in. Oh, time got weird that we skipped the beat somewhere. That right there. Yeah, when we have that ba ba that really quick back-to-back -back accented beat, that's only a three-beat bar. I don't know the pattern for it, but it's interesting that it's in there at all. I can feel that, that fill coming on. Very dreamy, but with a weight to it still. It, it still has an oppressiveness to it. really like it because I think the crash is just either the crash is just a little behind or the toms are a little fast and it feels like it falls apart at times or it's trying to fall apart just a really great effect that they pull out of that oh and then sinking it right up into perfection on that fill yeah
Yeah, very cool. I could already feel this. The drums were more full bodied than usual. You could immediately tell something was different. Take those really tight ride cymbal rolls. So the delayed vocals is an interesting idea, it kind of bounces off of me, subjectively. It's something about the super heavy compression on the second, the, the response is, but it's something you don't hear every day in Black Metal, same as solos. Oh, this is more of a duet, more of just melody, not necessarily a solo. I do like how it's trying to feel like oppressive positivity though. It reminds me a little bit of that uh, black metal adjacent project we checked out a couple Fridays ago. I wish I could remember the name of it. But just injecting positive vibes into the oppressive black metal. <laughs> what a... What an interesting drum beat for this. It's kind of punky. It has a lot of drive to it, but it has more bass emphasis than I would normally put into a punk production. And of course the violin is a nice addition. It's getting some fancy cymbal work in there. See, this is actually how I hear a lot of black metal. Just long held out notes. I will say this though, I feel like we are, should be almost done. That really does not feel like we're only halfway over.
Very cool. I fear we won't stay down here for very long though. As, as soon as I heard the guitar come in, I was like, nope, don't do it. I did it anyways, conducting the full band in. do for a return of the uh, clean vocals though I do like the syncopation that we have in this section. It's exaggerated a bit from all of the more static rhythms that we've had, more rigid rhythms, I should say, from the last couple of minutes. <laughs> we had to come back in full. You know, that last segment wouldn't have been too terrible as a post-rock section. There's drummers all over the place. Is there a drum cam of this outro? Like, I can picture it in my head, but it's not the same as seeing it. And having, you know, these images brought to real life, grounding them as something that really happens. See, I, I guess black metal fans find this to be a very impactful ending. The vocal delivery, the have half time, the screeching of these instruments in the, the chords that they're playing now. I mean, harmonically, I can feel it's reach, reaching a peak.
yeah, I did enjoy that. <laughs> I was going to say segments of that, which is probably the truer statement. But I think overall, I did enjoy that on some level or another. Um, there were certainly some parts that just felt like they dragged on and on and on. At least personally, I don't know that the 15-minute runtime was justified on the moment to moment. But I will say that after listening to so much of that for 14 and a half minutes that that final portion of the song did have some impact to it there was something in it that made everything else feel like it was necessary to make the journey feel necessary could i have had that same feeling in a 12 minute song maybe or i should say a 12 minute version of this song maybe i don't know that's one you know it's one of those questions that nobody can ever answer um, so you just have to take it at face value. Does the ending justify the song? Yeah, maybe. I think for fans of this type of music, it probably does 100%. But I do know that there are many moments in the song, as I even mentioned at the halfway point, this is only half over. <laughs> I was really expecting to be closer to the end when I looked at the time and seeing we were only eight minutes in. But that's a subjective thing. I'm sure people listen to this and they think it's over too quickly, that the experience is too short. That's not me, though. Not in this case. And a portion of that is that the song is what it is this is something i never really noticed before i've mentioned these words this phrase even black metal is an atmospheric genre it is a music derived primarily from texture rhythm and harmony is a lesser important part of it though it is an important part uh in the end it's not like uh well, like, uh, like hip-hop. The majority of hip-hop music, if you uh, listen, you, you mostly get texture and rhythm out of that. Harmony or melody is relegated to uh, fewer sections. So it's not necessarily like that. Melody and harmony are still quite important to black metal. Specifically, the dyads. Black metal loves dyads. They love chord progressions with chords of two notes. It's a really popular thing. In black metal um, but really it's the amount of times you play something and the oppressiveness of the sound whether that is more of a mid-fi or hi-fi but still fuzzy sound whether that's completely compressed out and sounding very fuzzy and destroyed and all of that it's about the speed and and the feeling that the music makes with the the timbres that they use to me that's black metal um, and this song is not really any different, even in the quieter sections where harmony takes a little bit more of a front row seat. It's still a song that's primarily based around using specific timbres to make you feel something. It's just that sometimes we use rhythm as a primary ingredient to that. Sometimes we use harmony as a primary ingredient. And the song sort of bounces back and forth between those two modes. Is it super atmospheric because there's a lot of harmonic layers or super atmospheric because there's a density of notes? You know, there's there's another genre that's very uh, tuned in to the sound that instruments make more so than the notes that they're playing, and that's post-rock. Post-rock is a very atmospheric genre of music. It just kind of doesn't care about the speed. Although tremolo picking is very popular in post-rock, but for a totally different reason than it is in black metal, because usually there's so many effects you can't hear the attack anyways. Wait a second. That's what happened in here. In our really ambient bridge. There are so many effects and textures, actually the intro uh, to a lesser extent as well. There's so many effects and textures on our guitars and bass and vocals that it doesn't really matter how often you're hitting them. You can hit them a million times or strum them a million times a second or one time a minute and you're going to get generally the same sound as the end result. 
it's really about how all these effects and textures overlap each other and layer and augment and combat each other to create the hazy atmosphere that we have in here. And you know, post-rock also has a, a sister genre. I don't know if they're actually connected through history, but they're connected in my mind uh, based on core elements of them. And that's shoegaze. And there are several sections in here. I was like, dang, this is kind of gazy. Now, I do know that black gaze is a genre. Mixing black metal and shoegaze makes perfect sense to me in this context. This might be a song in that genre, although to me it's more separated. There are more gazy sections and there are more straightforward black metal sections. Um, but I'm beginning to see more and more overlaps between these, and there is certainly something at play that ties black metal post-rock, and uh, 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 shoegaze all together in my point of view. And that's that I don't really like any of them. <laughs> I appreciate all three styles from arm's length, but they're very atmospheric. They're very hyper-focused on the emotion of a sound and staying within it. In fact, one of my uh, statements that I say usually for all three of these styles, no matter when they come up, is if you really like what they're doing, you're going to love this song, but if you don't, you're stuck with what they're doing for quite some time. And that's how I felt in some of these sec sections too, is that I was like, okay, this is what they're doing, this is what they're going for, I get it. And then they're still doing it a minute later. And then they're still doing a minute after that. And I'm like, I'm ready to move on. I've been ready to move on. This section is overstated. It's welcome. It is a subjective component. Pacing in general is subjective. Even if you like this sound, you might still find that some sections last too long or don't last long enough based on how you're enjoying it. Um, but all three of these genres are very texture-based, atmospheric styles of music and they all bounce off of me, and I never, that never clicked with me before, and I'm so glad that I've kind of had this revelation, revolu revelation, yeah, thanks to Panopticon here, kind of merging all this together to a point where it's very clear to me how all of these can kind of overlap and inform one another. It's very cool how this is very distinctly a black metal song from start to finish, but that it's not just that there's inspirations from elsewhere that get brought into it so let's talk about some of the things that this song is doing specifically first of all we bounce back and forth between two modes i've already kind of talked about this the hazy ambience and the black metal heavy atmosphere we stick with both of them for a while, but we kick it off with the hazy atmosphere. I liked this. There is some very cool melodic guitar work going on in here. We have some interesting drum work. The bass comes in and has a couple of lead lines before getting relegated to just pedal tone work. Uh, <laughs> we have some clean vocals in here, even if I recall correctly. Very hazy, though. It feels sort of like the album art does. Let me pull this back up real quick, which is just like white and gray. Like limited visibility is what this song opens up with. I dug it though. I hope that we had stuck with it a little bit longer than we did, but. Honestly, they gave it to us for like three minutes, which is pretty impressive. We had a couple of extra melodic layers thrown on, and then the metal comes in. And from this point on, for quite some time, it is just 16th notes from the drums, 16th notes from the guitar, dyads from the guitars, and growling. And honestly, I found that the chord progression to be mildly interesting, at least the first few times through it. I do like the harmonic resonance they're utilizing. I like the progression itself. I didn't need to listen to it a hundred times, but that's what they're doing. That's a personal problem. That's not a uh, compositional issue. Um, where was I going with that though? <laughs> oh yeah. 
And uh, I like the drum work. I pointed this out a few times. The drummer is just absolutely bonkers. I have no idea what school of drumming they went to. That is to say, I don't know who their inspirations are. There's obviously a ton of black metal inspiration, though. Um, the constant alternating bass and kick with 16th notes, the blast beats. There's a ton of that in here. But there's also some really fun cymbal work that reminds me of uh, exercises in futility. There's some really cool fills in here. There's that entire, uh, what is it, snare to tom to bass and kind of doing this descending pitch thing that we had. Uh, it was a section later, though. I think it was during our second ambient section. Anyways, it was just really cool. The drum work in this entire thing. The fills are ridiculous. The cymbal work is fantastic. The drummer is just and then at the end, like I said, I can picture what he was doing, but the sheer stamina and precision required for it is just ridiculous. I got to see it in person. Um, uh, the guitars, though, again, it's the constant tremolo picking. It's, it's the 16th notes all the time. It's the stamina. That's always going to be the thing that kind of stands out to me. Everybody just is really great at what they do. And it's flashy on some level or another. And then we get the vocals, and I know, I know this is a me thing. Y'all can throw it in the comments all you want. Skill issue. I, I can't get behind the, the growls. They just don't mean anything to me. Not even from a lyrical standpoint, which I'll tell you, I have no idea what the dude said. But they just never meant anything emotional to me. I even said that at the end. You know, I can kind of see where harmonically our final 30 seconds is a very emotional peak. I can hear the rising pitch every time we go through a cycle. We we have this uh, drone that just keeps rising up. Um, the intensity cutting back down to like half of a half time. The drummer just like oh, just pulling the whole song to a stop. All of this feels epic. And then just the same growls we've had. There's no contrast to it and that really is my big thing with metal growling or even metal screaming usually too it's just a lack of contrast with it i really 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 wished that the opening 13 minutes of this song had clean vocals and that we hit those harshes in the final two because that's where the song feels the most impactful. It's where all of the buildup has led to. And we could have had this heightening of tension, not just in the harmony, not just in the melody or the texture or the rhythms, but also in our vocals. And we just don't. The vocals change a hair bit. I'm not going to say that they're the exact same vocals we had. They feel a bit more open mouth. There is a wideness to them that we didn't have previously, but it just isn't enough of an impact for me to really get an emotional difference there. And like I said, some people may listen to this and feel like it was perfect 100% that I'm totally wrong on it. And yeah, that's what an opinion is. <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to agree with me, but... I, I, that's going to be my biggest hurdle, I think, for a lot of metal. Honestly, not even just black metal, although black metal harshes are not my favorite. Um, it's just, I've brought this up a million times. I'm just, I, I need, dis, uh, what's the D word I want? <laughs> Dynamics in my vocals. Um, and, well, actually, this is a good segue, I think. There's a term that I really love. I've held it dear to me for, oh, geez, over a decade at least. In everything moderation. I don't know where I first heard this, but it is something that has stuck with me for a long time. And it kind of dominates a lot of the things I view. Most things, maybe even everything, is fine as long as it's done in moderation. And so growling is not a, a negative. It's not a bad thing to add to a song. Soft sections, poppy vocals, lead guitar lines, lead bass lines, uh, pedal toned bass lines, simple drums, melodic drums. All of it is good in the right context with the right amount. And I think my problem with this track is that it runs at 10 for a vast majority 
of it. And even our ambient sections are still running at like a seven. They're still very dense and heavy and populated. They're just not distorted. That's really the big difference. But the second time we get to the ambient section, we still have those growls in there. So a part of the song is still pushing to that 10. And so when we get to the point that's supposed to be the peak, it's still just a 10. And that's why I really would like some contrast to it to make that 10 feel impactful again. And yeah, maybe I would advocate for some poppy vocals in here. That would definitely <laughs> put a separation between the vocals at one point and the vocals at the end. I'm not saying that that's necessarily what needs to happen, but it would work for contrast 100%. Um, but when it comes to metal, especially in bands that primarily or even exclusively use harsh vocals, especially harsh vocals that have one specific timbre or texture. There just isn't any moderation to it. You're running out of full extreme all the time, and it's just going to bounce off of me every time. And the, the song runs into these issues too. It's not just the vocalists. It's these sections that are consistently heavy all the time. The, the first black metal section is like, I don't know, it felt like five minutes of just constant uh, alternating bass and snare, uh, maybe having some blast beats in there, constant 16th notes out of the guitars. I really wanted to groove with it because I liked the intro, and I eventually did like the bridge for as long as we were in that. And I do feel like the ending should be impactful, but you know, I lost the trail in the middle, and I had such a tough time getting back on because... It's just a lot of repetition of an extremity. And for some, that is going to be everything. This is like, I don't know. I don't have a good metaphor for this. Just kid in a candy store. Well, the, the, okay, so, you know, I talk about stuff when we get electronic music that is just expertly produced, high fidelity, hundreds of different sounds, and I call this kid in a candy store. This is me just like, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? That sounds neat. This is cool. I love that. And, like, all these beautiful, vi vibrant, bright sounds are present all at the same time. Um, this full extremity constantly for such an elongated time could be somebody else's kid in a candy store moment. And so what I have been talking about for like the past 10 minutes in a, I've tried to be neutral, but I know it could probably be interpreted as a bit negative vocal delivery regarding all of these aspects is probably exactly why people love this song. And so I do want this to be my takeaway here is that I do think it is exceptionally effective at what it does. And if you are the target audience for it, I can 100% understand why this song works so well for you. On the other hand, I do appreciate the attempt. It's not an attempt, actually really well executed, bringing together these highs and lows, even if the highs and lows aren't quite as high and low as I would pick. Uh, because, you know, for black metal, this is massive, right? These ambient sections are really low for traditional black metal, but I come at it from a much wider spectrum, something that includes pop and classical and jazz. And so this is all still fairly far <laughs> on the metal extremity side. Uh, even the lightest metal is going to still be pretty heavy uh, in my scale. But, I mean, if you only listen to metal, I can see these smaller sections, these ambient sections being very diverse for you. So, you know, once again, it's, it's all about perspective. It's about context. It's about, uh, what is that thing? Experience. How you've grown up. What kind of music you listen to. What kind of music you like to listen to. What sounds sound good to your ear and all that stuff. So, you know, when we get black metal stuff like this. And it does bounce off of me more often than not. And I do feel like I've been getting a bit cynical about black metal in general lately. Uh, I do want to end this one before we get into the lyrics. with just a reminder that these are my thoughts and perspectives. And while I do try to add sort of a neutral critical lens to it and speak about what is done great on a technical side, it's still really difficult for me to come around to some of this stuff. But that's still a subjective thing, and that doesn't render anybody else's opinion invalid. I am not some sort of musical gatekeeper. Y'all just keep giving me music that I don't always have uh, 
the best things to say about. But I do try to be as neutral as I can. And uh, wait, there's only one dude in this picture. Austin Lund, One Man Project. Okay, I want to talk about that real quick. This is going to be a short timestamp, but I need someone to get me in on this. What's going on with the drums? Are they programmed? <laughs> I think that sentence had a bit more bite to it than I wanted. I got done praising the stamina of the drummer, but I suppose there's a chance that the drumming is programmed, which is typically what happens in one man black metal bands. Which, I mean, it doesn't take away from the composition of the drumming, but it does take away from the spectacle of it. I tend to care more about composition. I want to stick to that. It's the reason why we don't do too many live videos on here, and I try to stick with pure music, because that's what I want to talk about. But I, I'm not going to lie, I was a little disappointed when I saw that it was a one-man band, and, I, and the possibility of the drumming just being a computer seeped in. I kind of stung a little bit. I, give, before I get worked up into a tizzy, let me know. Does this dude play and sing everything on here? And if so, again, hit me up with that drum cam because I got to see this to believe it. But if not, some of the drum ideas make a lot more sense now when you don't have to worry about the limitations of humanity, which is actually one of the things I love about electronic music. You're not limited by anything number of people at your disposal, what kind of instruments are naturally made, uh, any of that. You can just do whatever you want. You can have 10,000 sounds in it. You don't have to worry about who's going to play them. Um, and so uh, I do have a bit of a negative view, a little bit of a negative view on drum machines, especially in, well, not especially, but in one, one man bands. Usually it's a, a vocalist, guitarist, who use drums in there, but I really shouldn't it should be viewed as a positive thing. I mean, it still kind of sucks because I have like this old age idea that musicians need work and that using digital libraries is putting musicians out of work. And I do think that there's a little bit of that, especially in the pop world where they can certainly afford session musicians. But I mean, at the same time, I'm such a hypocrite on this because nothing I play has real musicians on it, and yet I tend to stick with real instruments. I could probably argue my way out of that. I don't have the money to hire session musicians, yada, yada, yada. But it doesn't... I don't really think that matters. So I, I think I just need to change my perspective on that completely and, and not just on a surface level, but dedicate dedicate myself to that and make sure it becomes uh, you know a natural thought that I have thanks panopticon for making me realize some stuff if nothing else I think black metal more than most genres really makes me come to terms with some of my opinions about music and either solidifies them or cause me to reevaluate them and I think that happens on a much wider basis than any other genre <laughs> Uh, so black metal is pretty cool in that regards. Let's do some lyrics on this and see what's going on. All these lyrics do remind me that there is a really bright, I don't know if I would necessarily say warm, but uplifting vibe in one of the sections of this track that took away from usually the antagonistic heaviness, I'm uh, sorry, the antagonistic like ominousness that black metal tends to have. And pairing the weight of black metal with something brighter. And I found that to be really interesting. And I wish I could remember the band that it reminded me of. Because we just checked out something that was similar to this. Um, was it Azagram? That doesn't sound right. Maybe it was. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. Who was that? I'm kind of mad because it wasn't that long ago. Anyways, it was a black metal band. Um, and they had this very bright, positive vibe alongside all of the weight and rigidity of uh, rhythm and all that stuff. And we saw a little bit of that here in this track. I thought that was very cool. And I wasn't 
you know, I totally forgot about that until we got to the lyrics, and I was like, oh, you know, these are kind of bright. Oh, yeah, brightness in the music. Um, but overall, this song is not, I think, overly bright, but it is optimistic in ways. It seems to be a type of... It speaks about the human condition. At one point, it talks about um, the sky piercing through white. I think this is supposed to be the blue against the white, which is the blue sky and the white of snow, right? And it talks about this glistening, transitory, shining brightness. And it says, is this so sacred because we can't keep it? Do we only love because we will lose? If life was everlasting, would we need it? Is loss what we would choose? It asks some pretty big questions there that I don't think are really answerable. Primarily because a lot of it borders on the idea of permanence, which is just not a part of life. Everything changes. And so immediately after this, we go into a stanza of change. Autumn's beauty withers to gray. Does that make it more desired? Winter's tran tranquility. Winter's tranquility melts away either by spring or by fire. The idea that change happens, does that make wanting to keep something more desirable? Because change is such a constant in our life, static becomes desirable by opposite, by contrast. By contrast, this whole song i've mentioned some things i would have wanted while listening to this moving on to the next section a different type of vocal i desired something because it wasn't what i was getting which is what the lyrics allude to this is something more desirable because it's unob unobtainable Hmm, that's that's eerily close to my <laughs> to my experience listening to this track. Um it says for all that we or sorry, for all love we deny, for all the poison we imbibe, for all memories lost to time, another part of us dies. To me this speaks about um what was I gonna say? Why can't I say it? <laughs> uh, the way that we handle things uh, that we don't respect time. Why? What is this phrase I want? We don't, we don't recognize something until it's gone. We deny love. We take in poison. We treat our bodies poorly. We lose memories. As all this happens, parts of us die. Relationships that we used to lean on are no longer there anymore. Our body is fragile in a worse state than if we had taken care of it. Memories that seemed like just things in our mind at one point are now coveted treasures we can't remember. We're all worse off for it because we don't cherish what we have before we realize it might be gone. The final stanza says, The phantom limb heart, for the soul weathered numb, The celluloid dances for the dead and succumbed, The symphony plays forever on into the abyss, The message is screaming to those who will never hear this. To me, this speaks towards just how everything continues on forever. All of the things that we talked about, wanting things we can't have, not... not are taking things for granted. Uh, the fact that everything changes all the time creates a staticness. All of these ideas of change and loss are true constantly. It is the one constant is that everything will change as much of a paradox as that is. And that's what this leans into. Again, I think this song is primarily about the human condition and maybe waking up, opening one's eyes and saying, yeah, maybe the way that I'm living isn't 
the best. It says at the end that the message is screaming to those who will never hear this, implying that those who need this message most will not find it. But I do think that there is a bit of hope in this song that it might reach somebody who would open their eyes and say, oh, okay, yeah, maybe I should stop drinking so much. This is a poison for my body. Maybe I should drink in moderation instead of daily drinking. Maybe I should take those around me or not take them for granted. Understand that if I keep treating people like trash and flaking out on, on arrangements, they might not be here tomorrow. I should treat people better. All of this, I should cherish the memories I'm making because one day I might forget them. It's a beautiful song lyrically, and I feel like I make this point after too many black metal tracks. I really wish it wasn't hidden so far disguised by the vocals. Even knowing the lyrics, I don't think I'd hear them. Having the lyrics in front of me, I still don't think I would hear the syllables from the vocalist. It's not even so much of... of creating a sound that reflects the emotional elements of the music. I'm fine with that, but it's the fact that even with the lyrics, I still feel like this is a completely different poem <laughs> than what I'm hearing from the vocalist. And I just wish it wasn't. This is beautiful, and it's hidden, disguised. If Genius went down tomorrow... No one would be able to find these lyrics. Well, I guess Genius and a couple other sites, Metal Archives, you know, all the usual things. But if the internet went down tomorrow, all of this would be lost. Yeah, maybe a few liner notes here and there, but you won't be able to hear this in the music. But I suppose that's a different thing all entirely. Do you... Do you hamstring your artistic vision... To help people understand what your art is. And that's a tough question, I think. How to make your intentions understood. And that goes beyond lyrics. I mean, that even goes into composition. That is not a, an answer I can question today. <laughs> that is not a question I can answer today. We're going to wrap this up. Those are my thoughts. Panopticon's the blue against the white. Let me know what you thought of this track. If there's anything that stood out to you, anything you'd like to add on to what I said, correct me on. Maybe just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspective on things. Let me know down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you to this menu. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to continue on with, uh... oh, catchy choruses. Yeah. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.